Welcome to Vet Talk. Welcome to another episode. In this episode, I want to talk about the men in my life that inspire me. To me, these are the most important men in my life. Because as a veteran, um, I'm used to being a part of a team. Um, I grew up in a big family, and I'm used to being a part of a team again. As a husband, I'm a part of a team. As a father, I'm a part of a team. So there, there are men in my life that inspire me. You know, the number one person that inspires me as a veteran is my dad. Like I wouldn't be the man that I am today without him. You know, in spite of the trials, tribulations, and the things that, you know, I went through as a child, man, I grew to love the man that God put in my life or allowed me to, you know, he used him as a vessel to bring me here. And without him, I wouldn't be here. And I have to attribute everything that I do in life, I have to attribute that to the fact that I grew up with a dad, you know, which I think plays a big part in the reason why I was able to overcome a lot of different things. Even though, you know, at some point it had a lot to do with my frustration, my anger, bitterness, my self-hatred and different things. But after I came to the knowledge and understanding of the truth, that, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, I stopped being mad at him. And I learned to accept the fact that I was given the opportunity to have a dad, especially in a society where most people grow up without one. So the fact that I had the opportunity to have my dad in my life growing up, I'm blessed, I'm fortunate. And that's no knock on people who didn't, you know, who unfortunately went through a situation where they may not have had their dad, but I had mine. And, you know, sometimes, you know, things in life can cause you to be blinded at the the good, the, at the good. And you could be so focused on the negative thinking like, well, they didn't do this. They didn't do that. And you will find fault with, you know, everything that that person do. But then at some point, man, in your life, you have to take ownership and responsibility for everything that you go through. And as a husband and as a father, I made a ton of mistakes. And when I say a ton of mistakes... I made a lot of mistakes and I believe those mistakes are what led me to forgiving my dad because here it is as a young man, I was seeking forgiveness from the people that I've been hurting. And at the same time, I had hatred in my heart or bitterness in my heart towards him because of some things that, you know, I felt like he did or didn't do. And I couldn't go to God and get forgiveness without, first of all, forgiving him. So I had to forgive him in order to get the help that I needed. And because I was able to forgive him, I learned a lot about his story as a veteran. You know, learning a lot about just different things that he went through as a vet. And it caused, you know, him to do certain things, certain ways, you know. And at the end of the day, you know, he don't have to explain those things to me, man. Because you know what? There are things I've done in my life that, man, I'm not proud of. But the scripture that gives me confidence and gives me the strength that I need is that we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. So at the same time, man, my inspiration is my dad, and I thank God for him. My second inspiration, even though it's not a list, I would say my Uncle Patrick, man, he inspired me to start Vet Talk. And I was going through a period in my life where, you know, I had been sober, clean, you know, being faithful to a ministry, doing the things I needed to do. But then I found myself, you know, after being laid off from my job, struggling with, you know, wanting to drink because I started feeling like as a man, because I'm not working, I'm not serving a purpose. But what ended up happening was one day, Uncle Patrick, you know, he called me, we talked and he kept expressing how he wanted to do some things for veterans. And me and him had been talking about this thing for a long time, but it took time for me to get to the point to where I was able to, you know, actually start Vet Talk. And the reason why I started Vet Talk and the inspiration behind Vet Talk is Uncle Patrick because I wanted to create a platform that allow him to tell his story. Not only tell his story, but the stories of other veterans who, you know, overcame, you know, the trials and tribulations that, you know, we all face in life. And that's where Vet Talk, you know, started with. That's that's how Vet Talk started. You know, so I thank God for Uncle Patrick and for him putting him in my life. And, you know, there are other men in my life, you know, that I fellowship with that, you know, inspire me every day because I see these men be, be provide a protective priest for their home. And I thank God for, you know, him 
having this ministry in my life, um, which is called Adamant Believer Council, man. I mean, I don't know what I would do without it. And that leads to the next person that inspires me, and that's Pastor G. Craig Lewis, man. And although he's not a veteran, he never served in the military, just fellowshipping and serving under his leadership, it reminds me a lot of the military because it's structured, it's sound, and there's a lot of no compromise that I see when I look at him that inspires me to want to be a better man and not compromise, you know, stand for what is right. You know, and I think sometimes, you know, people confuse um, ministers with Jesus and they expect these guys to be perfect and they expect them not to make mistakes and, you know, make some, you know, questionable decisions at times. But at the end of the day, man, um, the one thing I love about him is consistency. His consistency is what brought me back to the faith. Um, part of my story, um, when I was in the military, I went through a lot of stuff as a Christian. I was already struggling trying to be a Christian. And I was, I was introduced to this gentleman, um, not physically, but through a DVD back when I was in 11th grade. And the message he was preaching, it inspired me. But I still had my struggles because of me not being able to forgive at that time. And, you know, just different things that I was going through. Um, but eventually... You know, just constantly having God place that gentleman, you know, message in my ears, constantly hearing him not compromise and preach the, you know, the word of God, you know, with conviction and, you know, just through the body of work that, you know, he put in um, with the Lord help, um, it, it kept me. It, it's the thing that brought me back to the faith because at one time I quit on God. I stopped believing in him. I became a Muslim. Um I became a Freemason, man. I mean, I, I went down a lot of different dark roads, man. And had it not been for the gospel, man, I wouldn't be here today. And the Bible says um, in, in Romans, you know, how can, you know, a person um, basically hear the word of God without somebody preaching, me paraphrasing it. And how can somebody preach unless they be sent? So the fact that he was sent by God and placed in my life, not personally, but just through the work that he was doing for the Lord, that's what saved my life. I mean, I know people got their own methods and they got all these different things that they say um, helped them to get to where they at, but that's not my story. My story is it was the gospel of Jesus Christ that saved my life. It was the gospel of Jesus Christ that changed my life. And that's what Vet Talk is all about. Even though, you know, I'm sharing veteran stories, I'm talking about veteran stories and different things like that. But the one thing that I can't, try to, you know, hide or not talk about it is the fact of, you know, that the gospel saved me. And that's what changed me because the Bible says any man who be in Christ, he's a new creature or creation. And just having this guy inspire me through his non-compromise, his, his, willing, his um, willingness to do whatever, you know, the Lord says and not change, you know, it reminds me a lot of what the Bible talks about God and him, there's no shift or shadow or changing. And to see that in our time where a man, you know, stands regardless of the oppositions and the things going on around him, it gave me the confidence and strength as a young man to be a better, you know, young man and to reach out and try to help as much people as I can. And one of the facts that I live with is I may not be able to inspire everybody. You know, the message and my testimony may not be able to help everybody. But my reason for doing this is because of the people who inspired me. They inspired me to, you know, to stand and don't compromise. And that's the one thing I could say all three of these gentlemen, along with, you know, the slew of brothers that I have at church. You know, this is what I guess, you know, I could say I, I take from those gentlemen is their willingness to stand and not compromise. And that's what I want to inspire other veterans to do is to stand, man. I know you may not feel like God is real. I know you may feel like, man, I can do this on my own. But I'm here to tell you, man, you can't. You can't do it on your own. You, you, you have to put your all in, in the Lord. You know, the Bible says, acknowledge the Lord thy God in all that ways that he should direct your path. Well, you need God just as well as, you know, we needed the army and our generals, you know, captains and first sergeants, you know, platoon sergeants, all these different people. We needed those people to give us direction each and every day because, I mean, we were part of, you know, that army. Are you know part of you know whatever branch of service you served in? We we had to we had to take order from someone, 
And I believe that a man without God is like a fish without water. And there's no way for you to survive on your own, by yourself. You know, um, I know many people in, in this day and age believe that church is dead and, you know, preaching is dead. But, man, like my brother Jay Song said, man, I wouldn't know God without the preacher, man. And I wouldn't know God without my father. I wouldn't know God without those people that he placed in my life. So that's what inspires me to do what I'm doing. And I'm not going to quit because I don't know quit. Even when I was a sinner and making mistakes and doing the things I've done, you know, the one thing I know about myself is no matter how many times I fail, I kept getting back up and trying. And that's because, again, the men that inspire me show me that, man, no matter who you are, no matter the mistakes you make, you got to get up, man. You can't sit there and waddle with your mess, especially when you're a man leading a family. Um, you know, you may be a woman who's, you know, single and you leading your kids or whatever the case may be. You know, you got to keep fighting. You can't quit. And... If you don't believe, I pray and hope that, you know, you overcome by the words of my testimony um, of me explaining to you and telling you about the goodness of Jesus Christ and what he did in my life. So I pray that this video inspire you. And if it doesn't, I pray for you. I pray for you. Vet talk out.